All right, we've got a five-minute sermon. Can you handle that? Uh, so I'm going to use 30 seconds of it to welcome Ms. Fraser's classes today. So glad you guys could be here. We invite you to come back and join us again. This is kind of how we roll most Sundays. Uh, so hope that you'll be here to be a part of it. In the fall of 1989, I spent Thanksgiving in a foreign country. It wasn't planned that way, but I had a student, uh, I had a roommate who was a student at Howard Payne. We were rooming together because I was asked if I would consider taking him on because he was from Mexico City. His name was Max Guzman. And I found out just a little bit, maybe two or three weeks before Thanksgiving, that he didn't have a ride his parents had moved up close to the Texas border so they could be a little closer than Mexico City, which is a pretty good trip down there. And he didn't have a ride. So I just said, you know what? I've spent every Thanksgiving my whole life with my family. I can opt out. I'll drive you down there. And so we got in my 1979 Ford Thunderbird. That was a cool car. Had a long, it was great on the highway. It was hard to park because you had to, it's like swinging a boat into a lane or something. It was so long. It had headlights, when you turn the headlights on, they popped out like that. Anybody know what a 79 T-Bird looks like? It was a great car, so we cruised all the way down there. And I was in Mexico at his parents' house in a little town outside of Reynosa, Mexico, just across from Mission and Harlan's in those areas. And this little town of Rio Bravo, I say little, it was hard to tell the population, but they don't have population signs, but... I was staying there. His dad was a pastor, and they had a, an apartment that was attached to the church. That's where they lived. When it dawned on me that Thanksgiving is not a Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is not a Mexican holiday. Now, most of us have a little bit of ethnocentrism in our mix. It's a fancy word for we view the world through the eyes of our own culture. All right? And so, it dawned on me, I was like, man, that's crazy, because on Thanksgiving Day, his sister got up and went to school, because it was just a regular day in Mexico. Only a handful of countries have uh, an official Thanksgiving Day that they celebrate. And one of the great disappointments of my life was the Thanksgiving meal that we had that day. Because his mom couldn't find a turkey, and because she was trying to be hospitable, as Mexican people are at the nth degree, I was the king of the castle for a few days. They, anything I wanted, they tried to do. She could not find a turkey, and so she made roast and potatoes with gravy. The reason I was disappointed was because I didn't want American food. I wanted her food because I tell my Mexican friends all the time, yo soy americano en mi corazón para la comida. So those of you who speak Spanish, you caught, I don't know how, if that's exactly the right translation, but it means I'm Mexican in my heart because of the food. I love Mexican food. And I had to explain to her my broken Spanish with her broken English, please don't cook any more American dishes while I'm here. Make me what you eat, because I mean, it was fantastic, and her, her family were really sweet people. So how did we get to this whole Thanksgiving business? Canada beat us to it. But in 1789, the first president of our country, George Washington, issued a Thanksgiving proclamation from New York City. This was before Washington, D.C. had been established as our capital. I want to read to you just a little part of this proclamation. It's really just one page. Thanksgiving proclamation from October 3, 1789. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, and to be grateful for His benefits, and to humbly implore His protection and favor, and whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer. I'm glad to live in a country where we've, at least at that time, felt that way. I hope that we can feel that way again at a higher level. It's, it's not a holiday because it's good to be out of school. It's not a holiday because it's a great time to watch the Cowboys lose to somebody. It's not a holiday because of whatever else is going on. We, we really need to hear the words of our first president. It's a holiday because our country was founded upon the belief that there was an eternal God who loved people and that by His providence we had become a country, 
and that we were blessed beyond measure. And because of that, we should have gratefulness in our heart. And he set aside a day. It was Thursday, the 26th of November. That's why we have it on a Thursday. And he said that we might then all unite in rendering unto God our sincere and humble thanks. I was on the site-based committee when I taught school a couple of years. And this, this goes back probably a decade or so. And I was a teacher rep. On that committee, you had members of the business community, members of the larger corporations like 3M Kohler, parents, teachers, counselors, principals. Number one discussion for three years in a row, why don't we have the whole week off for Thanksgiving? Anybody remember back then? You go back about 10 years, some of you remember. We would get like Thursday and Friday at first, and then we'd get Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then everybody just had a revolution, said we want the whole week, like these other districts, we want the whole week off. So we get the whole week off now, and we've been like that. But I hope that we would remember as we take some time today to remember to be thankful. We remember words like this from 1 Chronicles 16, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let us say to Him, save us, O God, of our salvation. Gather us together to give thanks to Your holy name. And then we might remember this little story that when Nehemiah You remember the story, right? He's in a foreign land. He finds out that the wall is broken down and God's people are scattered with no protection. And he wept and he wept and and his the person that was in charge of him, the king in that country, allowed him to go back. And they did this amazing thing of rebuilding the wall. Once the wall was built, they decided to have a dedication ceremony. We've all been to dedications, right? Recently Howard Payne dedicated the family, the Newberry Family Welcome Center on the campus. And we've been to dedications like that. I want you to take note of this as I close my few remarks here today. That when God's people gathered because the wall had been completed and they gathered to dedicate it, one of the things that they did, the Levites and the priests and Nehemiah and Ezra and these other leaders, was they appointed two choirs. You know what kind of choirs they were? They were Thanksgiving choirs. And they laid them out logistically. One was to go this direction and be singing the praises of God and giving thanks to God that that their city had now been fortified again and that God's people were safe again. The other choir went the other direction, then they met in the middle. It must have been an amazing thing to watch. But they appointed choirs to give thanks. I think that all of us ought to figure out a way to appoint something in our life where we ourselves take the initiative to say, this year, I'm going to give extra thanks. If you have something to write on or something in your phone, I want to challenge you to do this. I want you to think of the thing that you are most thankful for in your life right now. One thing that you're most thankful for. Type it in your phone, write it on the back of a card. You can grab an offering envelope in front of you. And secondly, I want to do this and then give you a homework assignment. I want you to think of the person that you're most thankful for this year. And then I want you to contact them and let them know why you're thankful for them. Send them a note. Give them a call. Write a text. Go by and see them. And tell them. Well, we don't do that enough, do we? Sometimes we we let time go by, and, and we didn't stop and really let people know that we're grateful for them. So that's the five minute sermon. Are y'all okay? I know you want more. I want to ask Jay Clark to come. He's going to say a few words, and then we'll, and he's going to pray for those that are going to be exiting. Jay, the mic's right there on the first chair, bud. And then the, the, our worship team's going to close us in a song after Jay prays.